Welcome back. Welcome back, Tenfolders. We are watching Tenfold Live, a show that is proudly brought to you with lots of love by Liberty. Remember, if you haven't done so, please do make sure that you don't miss this opportunity. Go to your app store and download our app. It's called the Tenfold Education app. It's a very powerful resource for anybody to be in grade 10, 11, or 12, mathematics or sciences. You do want to make sure that you have yourself this very, very useful app. On YouTube, you're also available. Find us. We are Mindset Learn. Once you're there, please do make sure that you subscribe to our channel and you also uh, click the notification bell so that when we upload new shows, you don't miss out on any of those useful uh, lessons that we have, will have covered that might help you uh, to beef yourself up. On today's program, we're looking specifically at uh, errors and misconceptions of the metrics of the previous years to help you not to make the same errors. These are the common mistakes that we see, generally speaking, when we are doing uh, the marking, set the marking senses. We see these errors all the time. We don't want you to make the same mistake. So we thought as Ten for Life that it will be a good idea to actually share with you these uh, errors and misconceptions to help you not to make the same mistake. So we are now going to go to part three. We're looking at paper two and our next section is going to be focusing on the errors and misconceptions that we generally see when you are doing trigonometry. Right. Now, like, like, like I said, we are now looking at specifically part three, which is going to be trigonometry. And trig has got three parts. The first part is what we call general trigonometry. It talks about component double angles. It talks about reduction formulas. It talks about uh, trig by definition questions. This is where you will get uh, identities and trig equations. Okay. Uh, trig equations are also very part of uh, the, the, the general trigonometry. And then after that, we'll then spend some time looking at trig graphs, and then we'll also discuss solutions of triangles, which is where the sine rule, the cosine rule, and the area rule become very useful. These are the 2D and 3D questions. Now, going back, back, back to the beginning, okay, what are the chances that you are likely to make a mistake when you're doing double and compound angles? Well, it turns out that there is a chance and one of the biggest problems we have seen is that people uh, copy the expansion formulas incorrectly, okay? So incorrect copy, okay? Incorrect copy, okay, of the formulas, okay? Of the formulae, very important. This is in the formula sheet, so you can't get it wrong. So do make sure that you go check it thoroughly. Actually, it's a good idea for you to know them because it saves you time. If you know the, the, the expansion of cos A plus B, you can expand it. It's cos, cos, sine, sine, okay, without any waste of time. But if you're not sure of it, there is a formula sheet. So please uh, make sure that you go back to the formula sheet and use it because uh, we don't want you to get it wrong just because uh, you forgot what it actually has to look like. All right. And then the next thing is in reduction formulae. Uh, most of you guys make a very, very critical mistake, okay? Maybe if I can just finish off this by jumping straight to the reduction from this and say to you, if I have a question that talks about maybe like say 90 minus theta, uh, okay, theta cos uh, 180 plus theta, uh, maybe tan, I don't know, anything. Can it be anything, guys? Can it be anything? Um, uh, 90 degrees uh, plus theta, whatever the case might be, and so on and so on, right? It doesn't matter what the question looks like. But uh, when you're doing reduction for formulas, what we've noticed as a common error is that metrics forget that if you're going to use 90, the trig ratio has to change name to its core ratio. So for example, this one here will change to cos of theta, and then this one here has to change to something else. Like so, so sine theta changes to cos theta, and then cos theta will do the return of the favor, and change back to its core ratio, which is sine theta. And the tan of theta has to change to its core ratio, which is cotangent. But we don't have it uh, as part of our curriculum. You can survive without it. So then tan changes to 1 over tan theta. Just, just be careful of that, OK? 1 over tan of theta would be uh, what this thing is going to change to. In this case, because it's 90 plus, which is quadrant 2, then, then tan will change to a negative uh, reduction value of negative tan of theta. Just trying to get you to understand that the popular mistake we see when we're doing reduction formulas is that the kids do not know, do not, they, it's not that they don't know, you guys know, but you just take these things for granted. So please, please, please be careful when you're doing that. Now, when you're talking about trick uh, by definition, these are the questions that involve you drawing a right angled triangle in one of the four quadrants. So what generally happens is you'll have a question that demands you to draw 
uh, um, something in one of the quadrants. Let's just suppose that they gave you uh, something that involves, let's just say they said to you cos of uh, alpha is equal to, I don't know, maybe let's say negative 3 over 5. And then they say um, uh, alpha is an angle that lies between 90 degrees, not 90. Let's just say 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Okay, so now they want you to draw it in, 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 in one of those quadrants, a right angle triangle. We know we are looking for the diagram where cosine is negative, And that has to be between 180 and 360. This is actually the third and fourth quad. Okay, third and fourth quad covered. So your question is, which quadrant will it be, the third or the fourth? It turns out that you will have to draw a diagram in the fourth quad. Now, what I want you to notice is that the common error that we see is that when people do this, they know for a fact that the x coordinate is negative 3 here because cos is x over r. They don't know what the y coordinate is and they know that the r value is equal to 5. So they would like construct a radical triangle here and then they're trying to find out what the value of y is going to be. Of course, Pythag helps us to be able to work out what this is going to be. And Pythagoras said x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Now, when you sub your stuff here, please don't just write negative 3 squared plus y squared is equal to 5 squared. There's a big, 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 big error here of not putting negative 3 in brackets. This here will put you in a lot of problems because it's going to give you negative 9. So that's an error. Do make sure that you use your brackets, okay? 5 squared is going to be 25 with or without brackets, but it's just good practice for you to put them in brackets because the negative ones will always have a different answer. Negative 3 squared is negative 9, but negative 3 in brackets squared will give you an answer of positive 9, okay? Okay, very, very important. And now when you are solving this further, you will notice that uh, in your attempt to work out what the y value is going to be, you will have to get to a point where y squared is equal to 16. Now, now another mistake we see is that people just say y squared is the square root of 16 and they give us an answer of 4. Now, I'm sure you'll agree with me based on the location of the diagram. There is no way that y is going to be negative or positive. It has to be negative. So you have to uh, include the plus minus when you're taking the square root. So it's going to be plus minus 4. And then uh, we have to obviously take a decision at this point to say which of those y values would be the correct y value and it turns out that negative 4 would be the one that we are actually uh, looking for. So uh, there's another error right in there. Always, always make sure that when you're doing your Pythag, you put your, your numbers, the values, the numerical values in bracket, particularly if they're negative. And then after that, always, always, always make sure that when you are getting the answer of the unknown y value or the unknown x value, it's either plus or minus. In fact, I think it's wiser for us to discuss the fact that x, uh, uh, y, and r for x, can be plus or minus depending on where the diagram is. Y can be plus or minus divide depending on where the diagram is, but R will always be positive only, okay? It doesn't have, we, don't, we can't have an R value of negative. And somebody's wondering somewhere like, why? Well, why is it called R in the first place? It's because of the fact that R actually uh, stands for the radius of a circle, which we're actually discussing here that you don't see. The full diagram of this thing is supposed to have a circle around, and this circle is supposed to look uh, something like that, okay? And in a circle, there is no way the radius of the circle would be negative because the radius is the measure of the length or the distance from the center of the circle to the circumference of the circle. So in this case, R is 5. It doesn't matter what you're doing, where you are. When you're looking for R in these questions, your R is always, always, always going to give you a value that happens to be positive. All right, now moving right along to trick identities. When you're doing identities, uh, what are the general problems that we have? Number one, the misconception or the errors that we get is that you guys don't know that tan, tan theta, okay, is equal to, is it cos over sine or sine over cos? Some people might say tan theta is cos theta over sine theta. We don't know this, and this is actually very wrong. At this point, you are in grade 12. You should know that tan theta is sine theta divided uh, by cos theta. So this version here, beautiful people, is the incorrect one. The correct version would be this one here of sine theta over cos theta. And it is so easy because in your calculator, they actually put the buttons in order that helps you to understand the correct order. If you forget it, just grab your calculator and look at the trig ratios. Just focus on the trig ratios. I'm looking at the trig ratios where the sine, cos, and tan. If you look at them, you'll see that the very first button is sine. Okay, so I'm going to write them down. So the sine theta, sine is the first button, 
and then there's another pattern, and then there's another pattern. Okay, let's look at them again one more time. You'll see that sine is the best first pattern, and then after sine, the following pattern is cos, and then after that, the last pattern is tan. So this is going to help you not to make a mistake when you're dealing with these things. So just remember, looking at them in that order, sine divided by cos equals tan. So sine over cos equals tan. It's in your calculator. You can't get it wrong. Do, not, do, do make sure that you don't make that mistake and you understand what is going on. Right. The next thing that we get in identities is the fact that when you've got the left-hand side and the right-hand side, okay, do not mix them up. You can't stick, take stuff from the left and move to the right. This is wrong. You can't take stuff from the left and move to the right. That will also be wrong. You need to work out the left-hand side independently. Okay, left-hand side independently. And then work out the right-hand side independently. I'm trying to show that one of the sides is going to be the same as the other one. So please, 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 do you make sure that you don't make that mistake. Maybe in lastly, in closing, the last thing that I want to say about identities is the algebra. The algebra, your algebra, guys, is bad. Bad, 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 bad. All the time when you're actually looking at this section, you guys make mistakes uh, when it comes to algebra. There's a lot of ideas that come from algebra that are used to try and prove identities, okay? Uh, for example, squaring a binomial. When you're squaring a binomial, grade 12s, we've been seeing this, we're seeing it again. A plus B squared is not A squared plus B squared. Please, that is so wrong, okay? It's two of them, it's A plus B, and A plus B, so you guys have to make sure that you both two of these, and then you do the lot's work. You go foil, okay? You'll end up with A squared plus 2AB, added with uh, B squared. Very, very important. Don't make this error. That's the first thing. The second mistake is when you've got fractions, okay? When you've got fractions, we always see a lot of errors here, guys. Very, very, very important for you to make sure that your algebraic game comes to comes to the part here. If I have, for example, uh, a problem such as sine theta, cos theta, plus, uh, let's say, cos theta is equals to cos theta, something such as this. It is illegal. It is very, very illegal to cancel this and that. This is so wrong. Don't do that. We can't cancel them. This plus here uh, prevents us from doing the cancellation. But what we can do is take out a common factor because you're looking at two terms. You've got a term here, and then you've got another term here. Okay? You've got two terms. You can take out a common factor. That common factor is cos theta, and then it leaves you with sine theta plus 1, and divided that by cos theta. Now that I've got what I'm looking at, is it okay to cancel? Absolutely. Absolutely, because we now multiply it. It's the bracket multiplied by cos, and then now you are only allowed to cancel at this point. Uh, you can see cos cancels cos because you're looking at only one term at the top when you're multiplying two terms. The first term is cos theta, and the second, not term, in this case, they, they'll be referred to as factors. And the second factor will be sine theta plus one. So those factors allow you to say the top one can cancel the bottom one, leaving you with an answer of just sine theta plus one. Very important for you to keep that in mind. Okay. Now, uh, trig equations, uh, I think all the ideas that we've discussed will also uh, take into consideration what happens when you're dealing with equations. Uh, please, please do make sure that you don't mess up your algebra. But remember, for trig equations, you're always going to get two answers from one trig ratio. If somebody has something that says sine theta equals to uh, 1 or uh, sine theta equals to uh, 7, this one will not have a solution, okay? This is not applicable, but this will give you an answer. You can be able to work it out. You will get actually two answers or maybe more. Let me make it 0 0.5 so that it leads to two answers. We want to work out where the sign uh, graph is going to be equal to a half, and that can happen in two quadrants. In this case, that will happen in quad one, and another answer will look, is going to come from quad two. So you always get two answers from this, so please, please do take that into consideration. And then in three graphs, Graphs are very interesting, okay? Graphs, generally speaking, have the equation A sine B into X minus P degrees plus Q, okay? With a bracket somewhere. Maybe let's just see if you can put the bracket here. Uh, you have to know what B does to your graph. You have to know, like, like we said, you have to know your basics. You have to know your knowledge of what is going on when you're dealing with graphs is going to be critical. We're not discussing that here. We're just discussing what are the errors that you're likely to make. And it turns out that metrics do not know the difference between the period and the amplitude. It's actually very uh, interesting. 
because I would have imagined that these are very straightforward. The period is how many angles it takes you to see one full graph. And then um, if you ever ask to work out the period and you've got the equation for sine or for cos, the period is going to be 360 degrees divided by B. But for time, your period is going to be 180 degrees divided by B. And somebody is asking, what is B? Well, B is actually this coefficient of x that we have over there. It's this number here that you have over there. Whatever it is in the equation, you just divide by it. You'll be able to get what the period of the sine or the cos graph is, and what the period of the time graph is going to be. For the amplitude here, the absolute value of the amplitude is going to be the highest number minus the smallest number divided by 2. Amplitude just tells you how high from the rest position you get to if you are looking at a sine graph and a cosine graph. Please note that the time graph has no amplitude because it does not have a maximum. It goes on and on to infinity until the second coming. Somebody's asking me, what are those bars? Well, that's the absolute value. There's a button in your calculator that's written ABS. You can use it. Uh, that absolute value just implies that it always comes out as a positive value. You cannot have a negative amplitude. Okay, that's number one. And number two, it's only for sine and cos. Time graph does not have an amplitude because it goes up forever and ever, and it goes down forever and ever. It does not have a stop in terms of moving up and down. It's actually, its range is all real numbers. So please, please keep that uh, keep that in, in mind. Very, very important for us to understand those differences. And then in closing, the solutions of triangles, the sine rule, the cosine rule, and the area rule, uh, the 2D, uh, trick that you guys need to work out. You might be asked to work out the area. Uh, you might uh, find yourself in a position where you need to work out the length of sides using the sine rule or the cosine rule or angles. Uh, that's, that's all cool and stuff, except for people using the wrong rule for a question. Maybe, perhaps, uh, that will imply that you don't know what you're doing. You have to know when to use which rule, okay? When to use which rule, right? Which rule? Okay, the sine rule, when do you use it? The, the cosine rule, when do you use it? The area rule, when do you use it? Okay, and then, and then there's, there's the, side, the, the cosine rule is when you have all the sides given or when you've got a side, an angle and a side. Uh, the area rule is also when you've got the side, the area or the side or if the area is given. Those are the only times that you'll ever need to use those ones. And then when will you ever use the, the sine rule? The other times when none of the stuff that I've written here works, then obviously the sign rule will be your go-to, your go-to, you then run to, to use that. Okay, so what are the errors that we see here? Uh, not much except not knowing which rule to use for a question. Grade 12 always, always have a problem of not knowing uh, that they need to provide reasons. You have to provide reasons when you're using your geometry. Provide reasons for Theorems stolen from geometry, okay? Theorems of Euclidean, okay? Provide reasons. There's more often than not where you find yourself trying to say the sum of interior angles of a triangle. You need to provide the reason for that. To find an angle, if you've got two angles and you're looking for the third one, we want you to always give us uh, a reason for actually making that claim. So do make sure that you don't mess that up. It's very, very important for you to make sure that you give those geometry reasons if you're going to use those ideas. There's still more that is to come. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.